Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Elden Ring Dissected. Today we're going to take a close look at the in-game map to see how it's been secretly evolving. I'm sure a lot of players have run into at least one situation where they saw a road on the map that's not actually there, causing some confusion. But if you were playing this game during an earlier patch, there were more places where this could happen. They've been changing the map with every major update so far, and it isn't something that's mentioned in the patch notes. Well, these are pretty benign changes that probably don't need to be mentioned by the developers. In some cases, I believe the earlier maps might reflect earlier designs of the actual world geometry. It's interesting to examine how From Software has been covering up their tracks, and allows us to speculate on some changes that might have happened fairly late in development. So join me today as we take a look at the many map manipulations of Elden Ring. Before we begin, I just want to quickly explain what's going to be in the video. I'm going to go continent by continent and explore every change, and this will include differences in the in-game map and sometimes also the map icons. Those are items that get their own artwork in the menu, and we're going to find some inconsistencies there as well. If you're worried about potential spoilers, you can use the video chapters to see what locations I'm talking about, and I'll cover the earlier areas first. Special thanks to Evil Cookie from Discord. His assistance was an incredible time saver that helped make this video possible. Having compiled full maps across the different patches made it a lot easier for me to compare everything. And full credit goes to him for doing the legwork and finding out which icons were altered as well. I also have to thank Floor Below. I know he's been doing map comparisons of his own, and he created the script that compiled the maps for us. Okay, let's get started. Across the major updates, there's only been two changes to the map of Limgrave, and both of these occurred in patch 103. A little to the west of the first step, a small speck was removed. It doesn't look like much, but there's nothing there at all, and it makes me wonder if a rock or a small chunk of these ruins was here previously. There were also some corrections made in and around the artist's shack. In patch 102 and earlier, it appeared a little too far south on the map. We can also see that the path leading to it was made a little bit more pronounced, where an exit from the main road was added. The unpatched map also had the path running directly through the center of these ruins, but that's been corrected to clip through the corner instead. And if we go further back to the map of the network test, we'll find some other small changes in Limgrave. A couple grave sites and some ruins were previously missing, and also Stormvale Castle was lacking some of what it has now. It appears that there wasn't water surrounding the Limgrave Tower Bridge. It also lacked the wider platform by the bridge's entrance, as well as a damaged section where you can find a warming stone. It's unclear if these reflect actual changes to the game space, or if these are just minor details that needed corrections. But there's also a couple spots that would have had a bigger impact on gameplay, assuming the early map was accurate. The arena where we fight Margit wasn't enclosed, and it makes me wonder if opening Stormvale Castle with a boss fight was a later decision. It was missing the walls behind the entrance, and it was missing the walls where the fog gate goes up during the fight. Then Godric's arena shows walls surrounding most of it, so it's possible this was previously an enclosed space that you couldn't have fallen out of, aside from this one section on the left. Taking a look at the icons, just the icon for the map of Limgrave East was updated, and the most striking change is the change in color. Kaled now appears red, Limgrave has more green to it, and there's also more details like the ruins being added here, the cave, the bird's eye telescope, and the minor Erd tree to the north. But they made a mistake in the updated version, where this part of the map is duplicated and misaligned a little bit. This error still exists as of patch 104, and it makes you wonder if it'll be changed again to fix that. Lyernia is the location that has had by far the most changes, but to start with, only a couple of changes were made in patch 103. The first change is one of the funnier and weirder ones. Now, this landmass used to have this big fishtail on it. That entire area is out of bounds, so it wasn't something you could ever get to, but in double checking the unpatched version of the game, I found that there never was a landmass to be seen in game either. Even with the updated map, a lot of what we see here extends out further into the ocean than it really does in game. Most of the cliff's edge is a relatively vertical drop, with just a bit of ground sticking out in some places. 
Really, the water should be coming up to about here if you wanted it to be even more accurate, but I also understand there's some artistic license in making the map look cool. And for the second change here, the original version of the map showed a couple roads leading up to Kyria Manor, but there's really only the one. So they removed one of them and made the cliffs more pronounced, to indicate that there's not a direct connection between the low ground and high ground there. And down here, they also removed whatever this was, because there's nothing there. If we look in this area below, we can find remnants of a path down here, and it does briefly align with the road that was removed. But instead of connecting to the landmass above, it dead ends, leading us towards a crystal tier. If we investigate the spot where we were supposed to find a fork in the road above, at first there aren't any obvious signs that it used to be different. But if we disable the grass from rendering, it makes it easier to see a dirt path that briefly aligns with the removed fork. While these were the only changes to the full Lyernia map in 103, 104 also had a few corrections and improved the overall detail. It added the gravestones near the mausoleum, which previously couldn't be seen at all. The same goes for the land bridge north of the artist's shack. There's also a bunch of small changes that were made to the southern section of Lyernia. The Boilfron shack wasn't previously on the map at all. And the whole area around the Last Cure Ruins was updated to accurately show all of the building segments. They also traced the little islands a bit better, and added some rocks that were previously missing. Lyurnia was the only continent to include changes to the map in Patch 104, which indicates that their game of whack-a-mole with outdated map features is likely winding down. But we can once again go further back to the network test build to find some more outdated features. The King's Realm Ruins used to be different. The network test is missing some of the buildings up here, but it also showed a structure over here, where there isn't anything now but some Roa fruit. We can also see that the ruins in the wooded section of the Bellum Highway were previously missing. And south of the Church of Inhibition, there used to be a fairly large object, probably a big rock pillar. And the Church of Vows might have not been here originally. The road did still lead to something, but whatever it was, looks a lot more like a natural formation. We can also see that the ruins found near the Moonlight Altar don't show up on the map of the network test either. We can see some big rocks in place of the ruins, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is evidence of the kind of stuff that got placed around randomly from procedural generation, before they went back and customized things further by hand. And maybe this is just another detail thing, but the gravestones you can jump down near Lyurnia Lake Shore also don't show up in the network test's map. Even after all of that, we still have all of the map icons to consider. The icon for Lyurnia West was updated to remove the fishtail that we also saw removed from the full map. The text nearby in the water was made a lot smaller to the point that it's barely visible now, and the water itself was simplified a lot. It helps reduce some visual noise for an out-of-bounds area, so that makes sense to me. But I also don't think anyone was ever going to look too closely at the map icons, rather than the full map itself, so it's still funny to see stuff like this being tweaked. And although they removed the fishtail, they didn't actually remove the forked road below Caria Manor. That shouldn't be there, so this icon is still partially outdated. It's difficult to see because of how small it is, but I also believe the King's Realm Ruins has the outdated building placement of the Network Test's map. But one more correction they did make was adding this patch of water here that's found to the east of Caria Manor's entrance. The icon for Lyurnia North was modified to remove this banner. This is the same banner that marks the names of the different continents, but in the final game the banner is off to the side and none of them are ever aligned vertically anyways. So I have no idea why it showed up there in the original icon. The map icon for Lyurnia East probably underwent the most unnecessary change of anything in the entire game. There are no changes besides a single black pixel over here being removed, and the northern tip of the map was altered to be a little more scuffed up and unclear. But it's pretty subtle, and I don't know what that accomplishes. Second only to the underground maps, which haven't changed at all, it appears that Kaled experienced the least amount of changes. To start with, the full map hasn't seen any changes across any of the major updates, so we have to go straight to the network test to see what was different there. It appears that Fort Gale was altered. I think maybe it was rotated, but it's a little unclear so it's hard to be sure exactly what we're looking at. There's that clearing out back with the flame chariots, but the map of the network test shows a chunk of building occupying that patch of land. In the final map it's quite obscured, but you can vaguely make out this segment of fortress that points northward and its equivalent appears to be seen here in the network test's map, which is why I think it's been rotated. In other words, this part of the fort probably used to be pointing in this direction instead. 
We also have this small patch of scarlet rot by the jail cave. It looks like it used to be a bit wider, and it might have had an island or structure here previously. The island would have been here. And up by the Rotview balcony, we didn't have the smoldering wall, nor the shack located here. Although the current map still lacks the other buildings found over here. So it's interesting that the map updates accounted for some of these buildings, but not all of them. We also can't see the minor Erd tree, which should be in the northeast corner of this map. This will be relevant as we start taking a look at the icons here. In the icon for the Dragon Bearer map, they pretty much just added that same minor Erd tree back in. But I think this reflects an actual change of some significance. When we look at the icon for Central Kaled, we can see that there used to be another Erd tree inside Radon's arena. It would have been somewhere around here. It appears on the updated icon as not having any leaves, and I think an Erd tree that's died as a result of too much damage from all of the battles that have taken place down there fits pretty nicely on a conceptual level. But for gameplay reasons, I imagine they didn't want a big tree that you can run around. I think this tells us that the intention was to always have two minor Erd trees on the continent of Kaelin, but they removed one from Radon's arena and moved it all the way over to near the Smoldering Church instead. There was also previously a land bridge connecting Radon's arena to the exit north of Redmain Castle. In the final game, it's divided by water, and we have to use a sending gate to get to the other side. But we can also find evidence of a former land bridge here, outside the map icon itself. We can find one remaining in the low-poly model of Kaelid that renders when we're far away. Now, here's where it gets weird. You'll often find messages floating on top of where this land bridge used to be. If anyone has an explanation for this, please let me know. I was wondering if maybe some collision wasn't removed, but I can't find a way to walk on top of the water, and I don't think that was ever really possible here after release. And even if we could attribute this to some kind of flying glitch, it's incredibly suspect that they're all gathered in the exact location where there used to be land, instead of just floating around everywhere. There was a glitch where invaders and hunters could get pulled in out of bounds and underneath the water, but it's unclear if placing any messages while doing that has any correlation to them winding up on top of the water. And even if winding up down here during glitchy invasions doesn't have anything to do with the weird messages, the ability to walk around down there is pretty suspect in and of itself. It's also entirely possible that the messages are just appearing in the wrong location. There could be some kind of issue with that here. But again, it's all pretty fascinating to me that it lines up with a spot that appears to have been previously walkable. I think that's too unlikely to be a complete coincidence. Lastly, the Aeonia Swamp used to be a lot more circular in shape. And it also lacks the dense set of branches where we find Commander O'Neill. In the Altus Plateau, there's only been a couple changes to the full map that are found outside Lendell. They removed what looks like a building or a platform from this location. And when we take a look there, there is a patch of ground that's pretty flat, and is lacking detail compared to most of the surrounding area. I've retraced the outline of whatever used to be on the map, and it's a pretty safe bet that something else used to be here earlier in development. The other change was making this landmass wider. They originally drew it so that it appeared to be much narrower than the actual ground we can traverse. This is easy to see if we trace the unpatched map with markers and run alongside it. But once again, we do have a couple icon changes here, and we see some changes for Mount Gelmir. They added some more detail by including the minor Erd tree, and they added a more detailed representation of the Volcano Cave. The Wyndham Ruins were also added, where it was previously empty and showed what looked like a road passing through. Given how the Wyndham Ruins are yet another instance of encountering the Tibia Mariner, it's hard not to speculate that something else might have been planned for that location. The icon makes it appear pretty empty, so we don't have any alternate ideas as to what might have been considered, but at the very least it comes across as a location where they were likely workshopping some ideas, before time constraints had them settle on doing a copy and paste of an existing boss. It's also worth noting that this bridge didn't appear on the map, so it's possible this was a later addition as well. And now we're onto the mountaintop of giants. Along the perimeter of the landmass, we can find a bunch of places where they've made things darker. Because these are all out-of-bounds locations we can't ever visit, I think the idea was to help communicate that we're not expected to make it to any of these spots, so anything that could have been misconstrued as flat ground had some detail added. This was also done in a couple locations more inland, in places we actually visit. 
One small change I found pretty funny was how they added some detail to these pillars on the bridge that runs above the Snow Valley ruins. I can't think of any reason for this particular change, but I suppose it looks a bit nicer now. They also made an adjustment to the alignment of Castle Sol, and they added the missing bird's eye telescope while they were at it. We can see the issue if we mark the bottom right corner of the map in the unpatched version, as the marker winds up more inside the castle instead of over here. The icon for the consecrated snowfield also got realigned, and the earlier version here is lacking in a lot of details overall. But we can find the remnants of a specific change here, as the Albanaric Rise should be pretty much directly south of the Erdtree there, but in the earlier map, it's quite a bit further west. The newer icon also just entirely lops off the section with Castle Soul, which makes sense because it's not revealed with this section of map. So as a result, they also changed the mountaintops of Giant's West map to include Castle Soul there instead. Now perhaps the biggest and most striking change to the map can be found at the Halig Tree. The coastline was pulled back by quite a lot, so that it now appears to be surrounded by water, which matches the in-game visuals a lot better. The surrounding structures were also placed very randomly and incorrectly compared to how we see them in-game, which is something the updated map corrects. Overall, I just feel like this part of the map got the biggest glow up, and it's a lot nicer now. And that should be everything that's changed in the map so far. A lot of these were brought to my attention on Twitter, and I'd like to thank everyone who contacted me with some of these as they were first being discovered. Of course, let me know if there's something I missed, and I look forward to seeing what, uh, if anything, else changes here. But before we sign off, it's probably worth mentioning the missing road to Jarburg, as it still stands as the most noteworthy location where the map is most obviously wrong. As of patch 104, it still shows a path leading there. And considering how all of the map changes in 104 were focused on tidying up Lyrnia in particular, it's hard to believe that they just keep forgetting about this. I think this might be the one spot where the map being wrong is intentional, and that they're probably leaving it like this by choice. Now, if the intention was to have some parts of the map be a little outdated, then it feels pretty inconsistent to not clearly do this in several other places as well, but I think they might want players to scratch their heads in confusion here a little. It'll make some players wonder what's up with that location, and it might encourage some to explore until they've found the proper entrance. That's the only somewhat rational explanation I can think of, but at the same time there are no clear signs of something like there being a collapsed road that used to be here. So it's still an odd choice for the map to look that way when it really just looks like this. If there was an obvious broken bridge in the environment, the map being wrong here would be a much easier pill to swallow. So that's all to say that I'd bet on this part of the map never changing, but I could also be completely wrong and I suppose time will tell. And if you haven't already seen it, Lance McDonald has a great video about some of the cut content found in the network test, and I highly recommend it. I wonder if any of the stuff I've discussed in this video today might be corroborated by similar deep dives in the future. This video originally started off as a recap on the most interesting unannounced changes we've seen, but I found that the map discussion alone was going to take up about half the episode and figured it warranted its own video. But nonetheless, you can expect a follow-up episode soon that'll explore more of these weird unlisted changes from the major patches. If you enjoyed watching this, please consider doing all of the things on YouTube that help. You can also support me on Patreon, where any amount is greatly appreciated. An extra special thanks to all of my backers at the Evil Vagrant tier. Aiden Page, Basileus, Curtis Ware, Eric W, Ethan Ross, Gary Marshall, Harry Pham, Carl Germ, Kiko Abad, Chris, Lazy Tangent, Lude Frago, Nashwan Azari, Nate Hines, Quinn Parsons, Ronax, Majalis Duo, Zenatu, and Zelther. Thank you all so much.